Hey guys, this is Hang Van Gogh. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have the beautiful Georgina here with me and we create this modern take on the 60 makeup look. The legendary hairstylist Serge Norman is also here as well to create this beautiful hairdo and another hairdo for you guys. If you guys like how you look, come back next week. We have the full video tutorial for you. I hope you enjoy the makeup and the hair look. Hope you give a lot of love to the channel. Give us a thumb up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for all the support. As always, for every makeup, I do some prepping for skin with lip balm first. I think it's the best way to let the lip really hydrated while you do the makeup and then when you're done, the lip become really nice and soft. Next step, I'm using eye cream. The brand that I'm using today for eye cream, moisturizer, and serum is called Deuterium. And this is not an ad at all, but for those who always ask me, which are some of the brands that have great ingredients and affordable, I think this would be one, the perfect example for you. But then again, you know, affordable is different on everyone. But I think for what they offer on the ingredient, the price point is great. I'm using some vitamin C. Vitamin C is really great for pigmentation, to calm on the skin, to brighten the skin. Usually I use every morning before my moisturizer. For moisturizer, I'm using the Ceramide Face Cream. This is more a richer moisturizer, but it's not too heavy at all. You can either rub on the skin or compress in the skin. It's all personal preference and always try to give the face a little massage at the end. It helps to wet in the skin to depop and the skin look radiant after to prepare for makeup. I always say every video, give some love to your skin and you will see the skin gonna do wonder for you. Georgie know that because I give her a lecture about skincare the last time we were together. You completely changed my skin now, huh? so. I think the best way is that you should know your skin type or what your skin needs. And you know, the most basic you can do for your skin is use you know, some serum like vitamin C if you need some brightening on the skin, hyaluronic acid serum if you want more moisture in the skin. I generally put quite a bit of moisturizer on and I usually let the skin sit for a minute or two with a moisturizer if you have time. If you don't, just use a tissue like this and blot some extra moisture off if you think it's too shiny before your foundation. And a lot of people are asking me, you know, how long you want to leave your moisturizer on before you start makeup. I think the best way is just let the skin sit like this and then go do your thing and come back and start your makeup. Georgina have a little redness all around the face 
I mean, the light is pretty bright. You might not see it really well, but usually when someone have a little redness like this, I just use a little primer, and this is like the green primer. It does help to cancel out the redness a little bit first before I put my foundation on. You can use your finger, just blend everything out, or you can use a sponge as well. For foundation today, I'm using the new Fenty Tinted Moisturizer. Georgina has beautiful skin, just a little redness, and I don't think she needs to have too much coverage. I don't mind if she's showing a little freckles, anything like that, but I think with this foundation alone, or tinted moisturizer is enough and the texture of this is a little more velvety it's not overly shiny which I like I'm using a kabuki brush from Ray Morris she is an incredible makeup artist from Australia, Sydney, you know her? Yes. Yes. She sent me some of her brushes and I really love them. I'm not sure where they sell all her brushes, but um, my assistant gonna just list everything in the description box and you can, can find it out. Every process that she does is really beautiful and it's really catered to makeup artists for sure. And they're really clever, they stand up. Yeah. yeah, it's really great. And you see the foundation, they have really good coverage considering they call that a tinted moisturizer. It's like a light to medium coverage and it's very beautiful. I think even this is a tinted moisturizer, it has really good coverage and with the kabuki brush, you can able to blend them out really well. I always try to blend out the neck if you wear an open neck and so it looks seamlessly together. For concealer, I'm using this concealer from Laura Mercier. This one side is for brightening. I used to use it under the eyes, the bridge of the nose, and anywhere I want to brighten. And for conceal, I use the other side. First, I put a little bit under the eye. On the bridge of the nose. Georgina have beautiful nose. We don't have to contour and highlight, but I just want to show a different idea of application today, so I'm doing everything. And I also put a little bit right here where I want to brighten to bring out the highlight. And use a blending brush like this. I just blend out the concealer. For the concealer side, you just use like this and you use a finger, just blend it out. Or you can use the brush earlier, whatever way easier for you. For contour, I'm using this cream bronzer from Tarte. I'm using the same brush earlier I used on the foundation. I like it, so I want to use the same one. This is the cream bronzer, but I use them as a contour as well. And the color is really soft, which I like. And the same idea that you use foundation, I just blend it out. Just keep the color a little bit. I do mainly on the outer part of the face just create more dimension make sure you get my chin so. mm -hmm. really sculpt it <laughs> huh. 
I worked with uh, Georgina recently for the first time and then I found out that she was my ex-neighbor <laughs> for many years. You would never say hello. <laughs> <laughs> she lived upstairs for me but I was always in and out so I never, I was always traveling at the time and I never really home so she only see me with a luggage brushing out. But I always said one day I'll end up in your makeup chair and here we are. Ten years later. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Six, I think. Six years? Yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, even though I live on the, you know, the same building, but the building I was very small, it's only a few units, but I was never home, so I never really know my neighbor, really. I hoped you went to your luggage though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And for those who's not very good at using contour product, use a cream bronzer like this because it's so much easy for you to blend. And a lot of times, the cream bronzer gives you a great coloring on the face. So even if you don't like contouring, you still can use this to give like a sun-kissed color on the face. Around the cheekbone, I usually ask the model to whistle a little bit. And this way you can see exactly where you can place the cream bronzer or the contour products. For the nose, we don't need to contour, but I still like to give a little bronzer just to define everything still. And then just make sure everything blended together. There's nothing worse than you have like a huge demarcation of the contour. Big stripes on my face. Mm -hmm. And of course, as a plus size woman, I love contour. I was hung a few times now to get my chins done. Georgina was quite disappointed the first time we worked together because we shot for the um, Ralph Lauren campaign and they want pretty natural makeup. No makeup, right. makeup. And, and then like, she was like, not the first time you do my face, huh? you need to do give me. I need to get a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> so we still give her a little more makeup than we should. Yeah. To set the makeup today, I'm using two different shades of powder. It's a new powder foundation from One Side Beauty. Uh, it's more like a pressed powder to me, but you can use that as a powder foundation. I'm using two different shades a lighter shade and a little more a tiny bit darker the lighter shade i use mainly under the eye on the forehead the nose all the area that i brightened earlier and the darker shades i use everywhere on the face i'm going to give georgina a little more matte finish you don't have to use both shades like i do but i like the idea a lot of dimension on the face that's why i use a lighter color on the forehead and under the eye and then dark color everywhere else. For the under eye, I would like to give a little more coverage, so I'm really going to just pat it on the product a little more. I'm going to use some bronzer from Guerlain. This is a very popular bronzer, been around for a long time. They just recently reformulated them with 97% natural ingredient. If you are a fan of this bronzer, there's a chance for you to try some new formulation. I'm using the big brush and basically all the area that I do the contour earlier, I'm using this to set the contour as well. Just to clarify to everyone, I don't need to, but I want to. Is Georgina is gorgeous without any makeup. Um, or her canvas today, just to create a look for you. I really get annoyed with all those 
nitpicking comment about the girl is gorgeous while you put makeup on. Yes, we all know that. And those comments were the one that annoyed me the most because no one need makeup at all. This is just, we play different character on each of the talent and that's what they're here for. They lend me their face to create makeup look. Georgina have beautiful full brow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just fill in a little hair here and there. I'm using the new Huda Beauty eyebrow pencil and they do have one side the pencil, one side the spoolie. It's a habit I always use separate spoolie because I like to brush paint the same time. And what I love about this brow pencil, you see it's really, really micro, really tiny, so you can draw the little hair easier. And that's what I'm gonna do. I do one by one, just fill in a little gap on her eyebrow. It's from all the waxing I did as a kid. Did you wax your eyebrow a lot when you was younger? They used to be like tiny little. People love to make it really tiny skinny eyebrow, right? Yeah, now I can't no. touch them at all. And the good thing is that now there are so many great brow products, you know, and they always come new things, it's better technology. And it's actually it's great. And you see what I'm doing right now? I do very tiny little stroke. And the best way to do eyebrow is take your time because when you draw really solid, it look really harsh on the face. And I think do a little step by step, it's actually create a really beautiful brow for you. Just draw a little individual hair. And Georgina have a lot of little hair here, but I like it. I think it looks very natural. You don't need to tweeze everything because that's the problem when people over tweeze them. The eyebrow doesn't grow back and you change your mind. You want to wear pushy brown. It's not there anymore. And that's the shape. And I'm going to do on the other side. And you can see I take my time just drawing little, little hair. And that's the hair will look more natural for you. To set the eyebrow, I'm going to use the gel for brow and hair from the collaboration of Jan Akin and Elf Cosmetic. Jan is like a iconic hairdresser, a friend of mine. She just did this little collaboration with a cosmetic brand. She's not doing makeup, but she's really wow with the whole makeup. And they just came out with this collaboration and you guys should check it out. The price point is very, very affordable. To prime the eye makeup, I'm using some eye primer from Rare Beauty because I'm going to do a lot of shadow and liner and everything. I think it's great to prime the eye really well before you do all of those. For the eye makeup, I'm going to use this new palette from Hindash. He is a fantastic makeup artist in Dubai and he also have a YouTube channel, very successful. I met Hindash twice before when I went to Dubai for press. And this is a very beautiful palette that you guys should check it out. As you can see, it's come to six shades, but it's actually like so many shades you can play with them. The pigment is more a buildable pigment, which I love because it's not overly pigmented, that it's dusty everywhere. And you can see the color gradation is amazing that you can play with them. The shade I'm going to use today is around this taupey color, maybe a little black here. And this part, I'm going to use as a blush as well. All of these shades you can use anyway on the face. You can use as a highlighter, you can use blush, eyeshadow. I think it's genius. And I'm also going to use a caviar stick from Laura Mercier. I'm using this more a dark, almost a black color to use as a base underneath. And an e.l.f. and Jen Atkin collaboration pencil. This, like, I think it's like $5. I think it's a beautiful cold pencil that I'm going to use mainly on the waterline. To start the eye makeup, I'm going to use the cold pencil. I'm going to do all over the waterline, the lower and upper. I'm 
download it for me. I also use the same pencil to do a thin line all across the upper lash line and use the blending brush and blend it outward and upward. Look out for me. And all this muchiness is gonna be great for the look I'm doing so you don't have to worry that it's gonna it's too much smudging. Next, I'm using the caviar stick. I'm using along the lash line. On the outer part, and I create a little bit more like a triangle like this. Use the blending brush and blend it out. You don't have to use the caviar stick. You can just use a pencil to create what I'm doing right now. But I find that because the carpet stick blends so well, it does grab the eyeshadow really well. That's why I use it. And it doesn't matter how not perfect the shadow right now because this is just like a base I'm doing. And then you overlay the shadow on top. For the eyeshadow, I'm going to use all those taupey color right here. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get some color and just really just press onto the eyelid space. Just so you're all aware, this is more a buildable eyeshadow, which I prefer more. I think a lot of time when the eyeshadow so pigmented that you do one swipe, it looks amazing on the hand but when you put on the eye it's dusty everywhere so it's really hard to apply the shadow or really hard to blend and that's a problem a lot will have a tricky to blend the eyeshadow when they have too much pigment all at once and i think hindash the whole idea for him to do this because he think of how people are going to use at home And remember when you use the eyeshadow, just use a little bit like this and dust off whatever you need. And then you just press the color in there to blend it. Look up for me. And I'm doing the same thing on the lower lash line. This color is beautiful. I think if you want a bit warmer, you can go around this tone here but I want a color really cool really dark and cool color so I'm just stay on this topi shades next I'm going to use the dark shades I apply the outer part of the shape that I created earlier And again, for this palette, if you want to go more a uh, warmer tone, you just lean toward here and you just mix together and blend together there. And that's the shade you're gonna use. But I just want to use a pure black color and I love how rich the shade is without looking so dusty everywhere. And what I'm gonna do, I'm using this shade right now. Close your eye. I'm just gonna blend out the edges. In this way, it doesn't look like it's have a harsh line. You just soften and blend it out. I'm doing the same on the lower part of the eye here. Just blend out the edges. Same shades again. I'm also softening the edges of this. I love the shape but I still want everything more blended together 
and you're still gonna see the shape but you don't see much of the harsh line everything I just blend together still as you can see now the edge is more softer if you prefer a harsh line earlier you can but for me I just keep everything more softer on the edges so it still looks like a smoky eye not just like a graphic eye shape and everything just bit more blended together using the black shade again and I just do a little bit on the outer corner of the lower lash line and what I'm going to do as well on the inner corner of the inner part this way just create a lot of depth and dimension using the shade earlier again blend it out close your eye are you using different brushes for the colors each or? of the color i use different brushes so it doesn't rub off you know from each other look up i love how the color very cool tone you know like all the gray and black they have so many amazing shades, but I think I'm going to stay with everything cool tone. You know, I might just want to close your eye, intense the gray a little bit more. And then that's great about this palette. You can go as light as you want to or as intense as you want to. And I think Hindas did incredible job on creating the shades here. I would like to have a chance to play with all these shades as well. And for the blush, I think I'm going to use something like that. Also, for the inner part, usually people like to keep the inner part a little lighter. If you do, you can use one of these shades here. But for me, I love how bare it is and not too much highlight in the corner. So I leave Georgina eye just the way it is. I'm going to curl Georgina lashes. For Georgina lashes, I'm gonna try to keep a lot of volume. So I'm going to use a few coats of mascara from Charlotte Tilbury. And for this look, if you want more dramatic, you can put some lashes as well. Off camera, I decided to add a few individual lashes on Georgina. I only put like one, two, three, four, five, just mostly on the outer corner. And that's why I did, I think it's a little open the eye up even more. For the blush, I'm going to use Hindash palette. I'm using mainly this part here, more like a cooler pink. And this is more a warmer pink, so I'm gonna just keep them on this side right here. You can see mostly on the upper part of the cheek. That's where I'm gonna put the blush. Same on this side. Georgina naturally have a lot of redness underneath, so I don't wanna put too much blush, just mostly a little bit on the upper part here. And the great thing about this palette, you can use some of these shades for contour as well, if you like, or even just a soft tone like that. And that's a great thing that you can play with them. For highlighter, I'm using the Lush Lumiere from Sisley. If you use this color on a very pale skin, this could be a very nice soft blush. But on Georgina, I'm using them as a highlighter. And you can see it's just beautiful, very subtle highlight. I use mostly on the high cheekbone here, a little bit on the bridge of the nose. Keep it both. For highlight, it's better you place the highlight right on top of the cheekbone here. It will show a lot better. Sometimes people do too low here. 
it doesn't catch the light very well. So it's better to do on top here. For lips, I'm going to use two products from KKW Beauty. For lip liner, I'm using 1.5. And for lipstick, it's a lip cream called Birthday Suit. For drawing lip liner, the shade is a little darker than lip cream, but I want to show you something about Georgina lip shapes. So you can choose however you want to do the lip shape. For example, Georgina lip shape color is right here, but then her natural lip line is more invisible, a little high on top. Some people, they just draw from here. I myself usually like go a little higher and I think it keeps the lips a lot of fullness. It's all personal preference how you want to do it. You can just draw just exactly the shape or you can go a little higher. And for me, I think it gives you more sultry look. Again, personal preference. You don't have to overdraw lips at all. But that's how I would normally do a lips if I want to cheat a little bit. Technically, you don't really cheat, just line the higher lip line. You can see the lip cream is a little lighter than the lip liner, but I think it's keep the lip a little bit more sultry, it's keep a lot more depth, even the lips is light color. To set the makeup, I'm going to use a setting spray from Urban Decay, it's called All Nighter. That is the final look guys. I hope you enjoy the look and thank you Serge so much to create this major hair. If you guys like this hair, you come back next week. We show the whole full tutorial how to do this hair plus another hairdo for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give us a lot of love. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to follow Georgina, Serge, and I on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for watching.